What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to Budget Juby. Now, today, I'm going to be taking a look at this little guy. It claims to be a professional four channel mixing console, but let's decide that for ourselves, shall we? And I should warn you before we go any further that today's video is going to be pretty information packed, mainly because there's not much out there when it comes to this specific mixer. Yes, the sellers do have a list of bullet points on their product pages, but that's really about it, and it doesn't go into much detail. And before you say, but Cly, wasn't there a manual? Well, yes, there was, but there's two problems with it. First off, it's in Chinese. Second off, it's just a single sheet of paper that's nothing more than a quick start guide. So even if I could read the language, there's not much info there for me to glean. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's give you a little bit of a background. I spotted this mixer a couple of months back on AliExpress, and since then I've been keeping a very close eye on it. At the time, there were only like two or three sellers of it, averaging in price from about $45 to $50, and since no one else was really talking about it, I held off. But recently, the number of sellers has significantly increased. Not only has it gone from 3 to well over 20 sellers on AliExpress under the A4 mixer name, which is what this one's going to be called on its label, but a similar number of sellers have popped up under the TU04 mixer name, which is one of the alternate titles. Add to that that it's popping up on sites like Banggood, Wish.com, and Amazon, and I knew I just had to grab one and talk about it. And if you're wondering about the pricing on each of those different platforms, well, as of the recording of this video, there is but one seller of this mixer on Amazon, and they're charging $50. Banggood.com is charging $45. Wish.com is all over the place, with the cheapest I've seen being $31 plus $9 shipping, though they are doing the standard Wish.com scummy practice of claiming a false markdown because... Apparently, the MSRP for this mixer is $500, but they're kind enough to only charge you $40 total. Let me pop up an image of that, actually. This is why I don't shop on Wish. Surprise! If you clicked on this video because of the keywords Wish.com or the word Wish.com in the title or even on the thumbnail, gotcha! Though technically, this is the exact same product. I'm just trying to illustrate that you shouldn't really trust the listings on Wish. And finally, where I bought this mixer was AliExpress, where it's currently averaging $36, though I lucked out and bought mine on sale for $31.50. It even has the exact same shipping window as the Wish.com listings. All of that being said, this comes out to be one of the cheapest products of its type on the market, even if you take into account the Amazon pricing. Now let me switch up the shot and show you what exactly you get in the box. So, what you get in the box is the mixer, which surprisingly comes in a really nice fitted foam padding, and I'm actually thinking about keeping that for whatever case that I end up putting this in in the future. You also get the aforementioned really crappy manual, and a USB cable. In this case, it's USB micro. That's right, this is actually a USB mixer. Now, they'll make one or two references to it in the manual, but on the box, it's done in a blink-and-you'll-miss-it fashion. It's right here on the back, in this illustration, and that's it. I don't count the fact that it shows a USB port on the front of the mixer because that's not what we mean by USB mixer. That is listening to MP3 files from a USB stick, not hooking into a computer for recording. So... Since this is a USB mixer, you will find a little USB port here on the back, as well as a toggle switch. Now this toggle switch tells the mixer what type of USB audio it's looking for, be it the port here on the front or this one on the back. If you've got it in the upright position, what's going to happen is when you plug this into your PC, it'll be detected as an audio input device. It'll count as a microphone and as a sound card, so you can actually listen to your PC's audio through the mixer. If you have it pressed down, the moment you plug in a flash drive that has an MP3 file on it, it will autoplay the audio files that are sitting on the drive. 
And while we were looking at the back of the mixer, you might have noticed something, or the lack of something. Specifically that there is no external power supply port. This is purely USB powered. And if you're worried about that, since it does mention phantom power on the interface, keep in mind that it's not an uncommon practice to do step up voltage from five volts. You'll see that in some of the Behringer XLR to USB interfaces, as well as some of the Focusrite XLR to USB interfaces, and they work just fine. In fact, Neewer has recently introduced some USB phantom power supplies that admittedly do not have sound card support, so it's just a power supply, but those are also coming onto the market. And I should also add that this interface can be powered by your USB port as well as a USB AC adapter or even a rechargeable USB power bank so that you can use it on the go. But that's enough focus on the USB port for now. Right now, let's talk inputs. Now, first off, on inputs one and two, you have a one quarter inch slash XLR combo jack. And yes, the XLR port is phantom powered. And as for inputs three and four, that's where things get interesting. First off, I wanna point out that three and four is actually just a single stereo channel, unlike one and two, which are both mono. But breaking down the stereo signal into two separate channels and counting them as individual channels for the sake of how many inputs you have is a pretty common strategy on mixers, no matter what the price point. So don't think you've been bamboozled. And as for how you actually get the audio into channels three and four, first off, you've got the visible left and right channel coaxial interconnect, AKA RCA cable, as well as a left and right mono one quarter inch plug. Also, Channels three and four are going to be for your digital inputs, specifically the USB flash drive, your PC's audio, and Bluetooth. That's right, Bluetooth. This mixer can actually turn your sound system into a large Bluetooth speaker. And as for your outputs, you've obviously got a left and right RCA cable, as well as a left and right mono one quarter inch plug, and a headphone jack, though that's more for monitoring your sound versus outputting to a device, it's going to sound a wee bit different. And along with those analog options, you've also got a couple of digital ones. Specifically, you've got USB audio output, which sends everything to your audio recording software of choice, or the ability to actually record audio to the USB flash drive. You don't have Bluetooth output, sadly, so no using this as a Bluetooth headset for conference calls, but the fact of the matter is you can actually record to a USB flash drive while powering this with a rechargeable power bank so you have full on the go PC free additional device free recording. As for how you do that, I'll go into more detail later. Needless to say, that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to get this little guy. Now let's talk about controls, but first off, I want to get this little guy powered, so I'll be right back. All right, I've got my USB power bank plugged in and everything is rolling. Now, for the controls on channels one and two, these are functionally identical. First off, you have the phantom power switch, which, hey, a little light turns on. This powers both of the ports, and if you're wondering about voltage, no, it is not true 48 volt phantom power, despite what the seller on Amazon wants you to believe. I actually did plug in an XLR cable and jam the probes from my multimeter into it, and it turns out the voltage ranges between 38 and 40.5 volts. Admittedly, I didn't have a mic plugged into the other port at the time, so I don't know about voltage drop when you plug in more than one mic, but it still works just fine. In fact, the bulk of the XLR condenser mics that I've worked with have a rated operational voltage between 12 and 48 volts, though some of them do mention that they can work just fine at 52, so you're okay using 38 to 40.5 volts. I have tested the AT2020 on this mixer and it worked perfectly. Outside of the power switch, you have a gain knob and a levels knob, which both control the volume of your microphone, allowing you to further attenuate how things sound. That way you can avoid peaking and get the crispest audio possible. Underneath that, you have a little bit of equalization in the form of a high and low dial. Yes, it's not true British style EQ where you get 
highs, lows, and mids, but it does a good job, especially at this price point. Beneath that, you have an EFX switch, aka the effects. By pressing this switch, you activate the delay and repeat effects, and I'm going to go ahead and say if you're going to use those effects, do not have your headphones plugged into the monitoring jack because you're basically going to speech jam yourself. Use with caution. On inputs 3 and 4, it's more of the same with one major exception. And that is, instead of having an EFX switch, it has an ST slash USB switch. Basically, what that means is if the switch is in the upright position, you're going to be listening to your analog inputs. If it's pressed down, you're going to be listening to your digital input, be it Bluetooth, USB, thumb drive, or USB from your PC. Moving on, we have a main mix knob. This is basically the overall volume of what you've got going on. And beside that is the headphones knob. This is basically taking the main mix and adjusting it just a little bit so you're not blowing out your eardrums while monitoring. And above that, we have these four buttons right here. I don't know if you can actually see the buttons themselves, but hopefully you can see the white text. Now, starting from right to left, we have the mode selector switch, which allows you to select from any of three modes, those being PC, assuming the switch in the bag is in the proper position and you're actually plugged into your computer, line, which is basically just default, and Bluetooth. When you have the blinking BT on there, your device is now discoverable and you can hook up a phone if you have one in the proximity. Let's just go back to line for now. Next to that, we have a forward and back button for navigating tracks while using a USB thumbstick, a Bluetooth device, or your PC. Also, if you do a long press on either of those, it controls the volume, though that really only affects the PC and a Bluetooth device. Next to that, we have a play pause button, which plays and pauses. Though, if you have a USB stick plugged in, it does something a little bit different. And speaking of the USB stick, first thing you need to do is make sure you have an audio file of some sort saved to the stick. If you don't, plugging it in will do absolutely nothing. Fortunately, I have something on here, so if I plug it in, it will automatically switch to USB mode, assuming you're already in line mode, and auto play the track. Here, you can play, you can pause, and you don't need to pause to do this, but if you long press the play pause button for about three seconds, it will switch to recording mode. This way, you're able to record any of your inputs directly to the device. And you can pause it, you can play it, that way you can start and stop the recording as needed. Also, if you press again for three seconds, it stops and then auto plays the recording, which is good for checking back your levels. Now, let's pull this out and talk about some of the limitations you're gonna be dealing with. First off, on channels one and two, I already mentioned that they're mono. I failed to mention, however, that they are center panned mono. That means that despite having two channels, both of them are gonna be center channel, and so you can't isolate the mics properly. That's not going to affect most people, but I may or may not have a use for having two dedicated XLR channels. I mean, I like being able to isolate one mic and edit it independently. All audio that you're outputting over USB, no matter what input you're using, is going to be mono. In the case of the flash drive, it's going to be single track mono. And in the case of transferring it to your PC, it's going to be double track mono. Because your PC does see this as a dual input device and it kind of locks you in there. It is 100% stuck at 48 kilohertz, 16 bit on my PC. I can't change a thing. Also, adjusting digital gain does nothing. I can have it all the way down to zero, and I still hear everything perfectly fine. That being said, the analog outputs, be it the headphone jack, the mono quarter inch, or the RCA jacks, those output stereo just fine. And any audio coming from your PC will also output as stereo over these inputs. Same with Bluetooth, same with a stereo track in the USB port. It's only audio output over digital that is going to limit you to mono. Though I should add that the audio coming out of those ports is going to be a little bit quiet, so you're going to want to plug it into a preamp before sending it to your speakers. Now, as for input limitations, I'm going to go ahead and point out that everything outside of XLR is going to be insanely quiet, and that includes the quarter-inch portion of your combo jack. 
And I should also point out that these ports don't provide their own power, so you can't use a jack-powered condenser mic, kind of like a lot of the cheaper lavaliers for phones or the condenser mic built into the handle of a selfie stick that I talked about previously. And as for what they will accept, it would be a good idea to make sure the signal is pre-amplified. Yes, you can use a dynamic microphone because they generate their own power at the capsule or a battery powered condenser mic like I'm using as my lavalier, but you're barely going to be able to hear them. Though admittedly, if you have a dynamic microphone that works over XLR, it's going to sound perfectly fine. Yes, you're going to need to crank up the gain a little bit more than if you were using a phantom powered condenser mic, but it's going to sound pretty dang good. I'm going to demonstrate a good chunk of these mics later on in the video. Now before I move on to the audio test where I actually let you hear quiet and loud microphones, let's talk about something I mentioned briefly earlier, and that is monitoring your audio with the headphone jack. That's not something that's very common in any kind of audio setup that you're going to get for under $100, and it's kind of sad really. I love the ability to monitor my audio. Because if you've ever used headphones while in voice chat, especially the ones that are going to block out a lot of external noise, you'll find that you start yelling or your speech starts slurring a little bit because you're trying to hear yourself through the headphones and through the audio of voice chat in your game. And being able to monitor eliminates that. As an added bonus, you can hear if you're puffing on the mic too hard or doing something else that's going to really make your audio sound not that great and adjust in real time. Now, when using most mixers, especially those under the three to $400 range, you're going to need to make a choice when you're monitoring. You're either going to be able to hear your audio from your mic, or you're going to be able to hear your PC's audio. Never the two at once. However, this kind of skirts that, but not perfectly, because if you've got this plugged into your computer and switch the channel three and four to USB, what you're gonna be able to do is hear your PC audio while still being able to hear whatever mic you have plugged into channels one and two. And for a while, I thought that was amazing because I could hear my PC while using my microphone. And then it dawned on me, anything that you can hear over your headphones, your PC can hear too. So I did a test recording and sure enough, Anything that I had playing for my computer over channel 3 and 4 was getting recorded in Audacity. So you're still going to need to make the same choice with this mixer that you do with the more expensive mixers. The fact that I can use the same workaround for one that I could get for $40 versus $300, well, okay, that works out. Basically, all I do is put my PC's audio and my mixer's monitoring audio through an additional $20 mixer and all is well. Since it's a product that plagues this mixer and one that I can get for 10 times as much, eh, it's a trade-off. It's fine. I don't care. It's not a factor at this point. Anyway, I think I've gushed about monitoring enough. I kind of get excited by that feature because I'm that much of an audio geek these days. So let's switch over to the audio test so you can hear a phantom-powered condenser mic as well as a dynamic mic over both quarter-inch and XLR. All right, I've switched over to my BM-800 on my way to Audacity, and as you can see, I'm pretty friggin' loud. Now, admittedly, I am using a proper XLR cable with phantom power as opposed to the 3.5mm 2XLR cable that was included with the BM-800, but, as I established earlier, the one quarter inch jacks in the mixer are unpowered, so even if I used an adapter, it would ultimately be pointless. Now, as for my position from the microphone, I'm about four inches away to take advantage of the proximity effect, and I'm coming in at about negative 12 to negative 6 decibels. Fortunately, even if I were to back up to a more adequate one foot range from the microphone, I'm still coming in just fine at the negative 16 decibel range. Even better is the fact that I have nowhere near maxed out my gain because while technically I have maxed out my main mix, I'm only sitting at about 50% on both the gain and level knobs for input number one. Speaking of knobs, let's play with the EQ a little bit, shall we? Here I am up close to the mic using the proximity effect, and here I am using the proximity effect with all of the bass. And, of course, all of the bass at the normal speaking distance also sounds kind of nice. As for all of the treble, things get a little clippy here. 
though if I use both in equal volume, it actually thickens the audio signal and just adds a little bit of richness to my voice. I actually kind of like it. Though it does still sound a little artificial in my headphones, we'll see how it sounds in the final recording. One last thing I want to do before switching mics is to A, turn off my monitoring, and B, hit the effects switch. And now, now I'll, I'll show, show you what, what the effects, effects sound, sound like. like. This, this is the bare, bare minimum, minimum of both. both. And, and here, here is all of the repeat. repeat. I, I couldn't, couldn't see, see the knob that I switched there. 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 And, and now all of the, all delay. the delay. I actually, I actually really like the really delay like the because, delay because if, I if I spin the knob really the quickly, quickly, things start, start sounding, sounding funky. funky. Very funky. funky. And back to normal. Let me go ahead and switch to the dynamic mic, starting off with the one quarter inch jack. Okay, I've switched over to the Pile PV Mic 58, and as you can see, when you're using the quarter inch jack, you can't hear jack. Now, I apologize in advance in case there's any hissing in the background, but I did have to bury the needle just to get something out of this. If I'm not mistaken though, if I use input three and four as opposed to input two, it shouldn't be as hissy when you max it out, though it will come in at about the same volume level. The beauty of a dynamic mic, especially this one though, is what happens next. Now that I've got the proper XLR cable plugged into the PD Mic 58, it probably sounds a whole heck of a lot better. Yes, admittedly, I'm still burying the needle so that you can hear me, but the fact that the mic is louder and richer means that you're probably not noticing the hissing anywhere near as much. And if I told you that this mic only costs $14, you might be a bit surprised. Don't worry, it has its own dedicated review coming in the hopefully not too distant future. And speaking of prices, this mixer, this cable, and this mic, or the BM800, all come in at a total value of about the price of a blue snowball ice while sounding a whole heck of a lot better. There will be head-to-head -head video challenges coming soon. Now, I'm going to switch over to the BM800 one last time for the roundup, and this time I'm going to be recording to a USB thumb drive so that you can see what that sounds like. So as for my verdict, this little guy is an amazing grab. Not only is it decent at $50 for what you're getting, because a lot of the mixers in that price range are lacking a good chunk of these features, especially the USB variety mixers, but as the price goes down, the deal gets better. If you get lucky like I did and find it for $32 or so on sale with a shipping window of 12 to 20 days, grab it. It is awesome especially when you take into account the bare bones basic Euphoria UM2 from Behringer is going to cost you $40 by itself and all you're going to get is a single XLR one quarter inch combo jack and another, I don't even know if it's powered, one quarter inch jack. You get a lot more than that here for around the same price and the feature that I'm using right now, the on the go recording is enough to make me say this is a good grab. I will honestly say that this mixer is entering rotation on my main gear. It's not going to replace my Q1202 USB, but it's going to enter my mobile kit because I can record without having to listen to the fan on my laptop. It's awesome. All of that being said, there is a competitor on the horizon. It's not as ubiquitous as the A4 because no one's really selling it on places like Wish.com yet. Well, there's one seller, but the number of sellers for it on AliExpress have gone from one to maybe a dozen or so, and I found it on a couple of other discount sites. It looks to be a beat-for-beat -beat replication and partial upgrade of this little mixer. So if this video does well, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to check it out, and I'm going to put them head-to-head. -head. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. Anyway, I've got to prep for a versus battle with this mixer and the BM800 against a blue snowball ice. So, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.